Welcome friends, welcome back to The Hangar. It is a quiet weekend at Chris's shop. No work going on today, but the, uh, the Dynon install is well underway in the cockpit. Um, we're playing around with uh, rearranging where everything is going to go. So be on the lookout for those videos um, where we're working through those problems. Not really problems. We're working through my issues of where things should be placed in the cockpit to make it easy for me to fly. Uh, the control surfaces are out at, uh, at Paul's shop and he is spraying them today with paint. So those will arrive back um, in a few videos from now and we'll put those back on. And I'm taking today to figure out how to polish the aluminum on this plane. Now, I've had a lot of comments. A lot of people have given me some really great suggestions. But one of the things you have to understand is that on an aircraft, this isn't aluminum, like the same aluminum that a, uh, an 18-wheeler wheel would be made from or a gas tank on a big truck. You see those guys polishing those wheels and using some really abrasive products. And that's fine because it works really well on those things. On an airplane, this skin is an aluminum alloy that is clad with aluminum, aluminum on both sides. So it's a 2024 aluminum alloy clad with aluminum. It's called all clad and it is structural to the aircraft. This is really what keeps the aircraft together. So you have to be careful on what you use. You don't want to break through the cladding and you don't want to cause corrosion because some of those other products can be corrosive and then shouldn't be used on the aircraft. There are some places like this part right here, which is 6061 aluminum and some of the other parts at the front, 6061, a little more forgiving um, in the polishing department. So I'm using Nuvite. And this is a polish that is for aircraft. And because of, you know, some of the scratches on this aircraft, because it's a 61 year old plane that has been through some things in its life, I'm gonna have to start with their most aggressive polish, the IIF9, and then work through the four stages of their polish. Now, the other side of the aircraft, um, I'm halfway through. I've gotten through two stages of the polish and it looks really fantastic. This line that you can kind of see down here, you probably can't see it very well in the camera, but you can see it when you're standing beside the plane. Looks awful. I've pretty much got it out on the other side. And it is two o'clock in the afternoon on a Sunday. I got here this morning at nine and started working and I got the other half of the plane done down to the second, second polish. So it's really not gonna take that long. And everyone that I've spoken to who actually owns a polished Cessna or a polished aircraft says the first time you do it, it's the worst. It's going to take the longest amount of time. You really have to work on it. But after that, you're just doing touch up and it's really easy. And in my opinion, even the least maintained polished aircraft looks better than most of the painted aircraft out there. If you've ever been out on an airfield, and looked at the paint of some of the private general aviation aircraft, they, uh, they need some help. So we're gonna start with the IF-9. Nuvite, New Shine, IIF-9, and it says heavy corrosion and surface repair. So this will get out all of these scratches. Spoke to some people at Nuvite, and um, this is the method that they suggested to me. So tiny little paintbrush, dab it on, don't use too much. That's what they said to me. Um, one of the mistakes that people do is they put on too much. Dab it in a few places along. Just like that. Take your rotary polisher and I have on here a wool wheel and you just kind of smear it across. Just like that. Then, um, any RPM between 1,600 and 2,000 is what they recommend. And I'm holding it at a 45, so that um, you're not holding it flat at a 45. And it still looks horrible. Now, what they say is that you just keep doing it. And this, this line here that looks pretty bad, um, we just keep doing it. And I found on the other side of the aircraft that I added, um, I added five or six times just doing that motion 
in order to polish out this scratchy bit. I wish I could find the person who did this because <laughs> I would certainly give them a piece of my mind. And the marks are almost gone. So, and so the whole idea is just to be slow, methodical. Do one small bit at a time. So this is all I'm gonna do on this bit with the IF, IIF9. And then I'll move to another square and then I'll just keep going back along the plane. Then I'll upgrade to the next grit or the next polish and go through all four polishes. Um, I've got maybe another five hours that I can work today, but at some point I need to head over to Paul's paint shop and take a look at what he's doing. So why don't we go now to the work that I did yesterday, prepping all of the, uh, all of the control surfaces before we took them over to Paul's. Paul is a little shy. I may not be able to get him on camera, so I may have to shoot around him as he's putting on the paint. So I'm gonna continue for a couple more hours doing this and then head over to Paul's. I'll see you over there. Now, since all of the control surfaces were off the airplane, I was playing around with them and I've been playing around with how to polish the plane. And I realized that the control surfaces, they just weren't gonna polish up very nicely. They've been, uh, they've been mistreated in the, in the, not mistreated, but they're pretty scratched up from the previous painting process. And I didn't think I was ever gonna get them polished up nicely. So uh, I thought since they're off the plane, let's take them and have them painted a nice accent color. And uh, called around and Chris has a friend just up the road from the airport here, and he's gonna paint them for me. But I need to prep them first. So what I'm doing right now is scrubbing on a little bit of Aluma prep, which is uh, essentially a cleaner for the aluminum. And once I get this on, I'm then going to coat it with what was formerly known as Alodyne. Pretty easy process, just takes a bit of time. And what I've been told is don't let it dry and rinse it extremely well. So now that I've got this scrubbed on, we'll rinse it and then we'll move on to the Alodyne. This is what used to be known as Allodyne. It's now called Bondurite 1201. Spray it on, get it everywhere. Don't leave it on too long and don't let it dry.
that like a hardener or something? Or? That's a hardener, yeah. And then a reducer. I guess the reducer reduces? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Things that, right? Yeah. So that makes is it soft and thick and stuff, right? Okay. The poly air thing. This is nice and durable, right? So. It's red. Actually, this is the color I painted on this one. Back in the day. What do you want me to do? Do what you do. <laughs> do what I do. Do what you do, and I'll just figure out how to do it. And I'll figure out how to work around you. Don't worry about me. Once in a while I come across just little specks of paint that I didn't get off in the stripping process. Um, at this point they come off pretty easily with my thumbnail. 